This is a 60 pound child. And this is an 80 ton tank. And today we're going to be conducting a series of ethical tests. The first of which being, what happens when you combine the two? The tank wins. Plus we found a fun new way to make pancakes. So then how many children does it take to stop a tank? I'd wager it's more than five, but we're about to find out. Well, they didn't hold up terribly bad. The problem we just had is that our defenses weren't properly engineered. But now we've created an absolutely unbreakable blockade. At least I'm pretty sure. We're gonna find out. And the tank's not even gonna pick up speed before it gets to them. Somehow they've actually stopped the tank. Since I'm not allowed to freeze them in place and engineer them, I'm just gonna make a big pile of them. It's inevitable that the tank will have to stop. It cannot fight through all of these children all at once. I feel like this should be on a painting somewhere. Now I know what you're thinking. This isn't fair. It's children against a tank. But the tank only has this much room to pick up speed before crushing the children, so it's anyone's guess what's about to happen. Also, the game really loves this too. It's already lagging. So we're going to start the tank on its merry old way and see if that was enough children to stop it. Looks like it's not. But I could argue that some of the children possibly survived that. Not this one, but maybe some of the ones in the middle. Well, it has been a while since I got a video demonetized. Yet, the only thing I've learned so far is that tanks are too slow. Luckily, there's no rule stopping us from attaching jet engines to the back of a tank, therefore making it a little bit faster. This time we could use more normal sized humans. And I've given them a bit of space so the tank can adequately get up to cruising altitude. So then we activate it all together, the jets are winding up, it's actually lifting the tank. There we go, okay, we might have to re-engineer this a little bit. I didn't realize just how powerful those jets were, but I bet those people are awfully nervous right now. They're about to be crushed by a very angry tank. Body slam. Well, that actually worked out surprisingly well. And we have liftoff. My tank is literally flying through the air. I feel like there's some kind of valuable lesson in there somewhere. But this is actually an educational video. We're all going to learn a lot today. Like when you put jet engines on a tank, make sure they're pushing evenly straight through the center of mass. That way it should accelerate very gently perfectly straight, picking up speed as it goes. Well, it is going faster. We need another jet to kind of balance it out. Yeah, just like that. Now, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit this, but I feel like I might have underestimated the difficulty in attaching rockets to a tank. This time, I've hopefully attached them directly behind the tank that will actually sort of pull the tank instead of pushing it into the ground. So far, I'm not disappointed with the result. I think we might have made a rocket tank. Yep, we've sure made a rocket tank. This thing is moving. It already traveled basically the length of the level. It is going mega fast. So therein lies the question, what do we put in front of it? How about one single human being who is about to be absolutely evaporated by this monstrosity? All right, well, let's see how this unfolds for our happy hero. He was literally evaporated. There is not a single atom of his being left in existence. The tank also not feeling super hot. I just made a fun new discovery. I can go like this. There's a rocket tank. There's a rocket tank. There's a rocket tank. There's a rocket tank. Not really sure where they're going at this point. They're basically going to go smash into the wall, but I can absolutely spam these things, which is going to be helpful for our further experiments. All we need now is the biggest mountain of people that's ever been created. Honestly, the ones that die now are considered the lucky ones. That's gonna have to be good enough for now. The game simply can't handle anything more. All right, let's follow our brave hero along. The game is not liking this one little bit. I don't know if we're moving very quick or very slow. We're going very quick. Okay, we're about to hit my mountain of people and we broke the game. <laughs> oh, we were getting such a good result too. Oh, wait, there it goes. Now we're getting somewhere perfect. It would be better if we could get more than one frame per minute. But I won't complain with this result. Don't know where the explosion came from. I feel like this image is just a beautiful metaphor of this entire video. The game unfortunately couldn't handle that beautiful scene we created. Luckily we're going to jump straight into our next experiment. If we attach this tank to this arm and this tank to this arm with unbreakable steel cables, will the man be able to hold the tank still? Well, that's just the kind of thing we're here to find out. Okay, they did not put up any resistance at all. He's made of jello. He's still somehow being held together by something. He's sort of jiggling in the air. His very atoms are breaking. The tanks are stopping for nothing. You know what? I just can't help myself. We, we gotta do this again. Well, I think one of the rockets already blew up. 
Not entirely sure how that happened. Not that it matters, I think we're about to hit a giant wall of people though, so this is going to be an absolute yard sale. I'm really excited for it. Oh, the game gave up again. Oh, not really actually, it might still let me get away with this. I figured because there was less people, there'd be less parts flying around. And technically I am still right, there's just a giant mass of body parts at this point. And I didn't ask for slow motion, but the game- oh, the body parts hit the tank afterwards. That was a very satisfying result. And luckily all the evidence burns up after we're done. I've also always really been a fan of these things. They rocket things straight up in a great big hurry. But that kind of seems a waste to do with no payload on top of it. So we're going to add three unevenly sized people to see if we can get them to the moon. But I know what you're thinking. That's not safe. You can't just send them to the moon. But I can if we give them all seatbelts. I am a little worried about the uneven thrust. Uh, already we're steering a little bit to port. Well, that's okay. We don't make it to the moon on the first try in any game we play. It takes a little bit of sacrifice to get there. Yeah, whatever. They died doing what they love. Now, this may sound crazy, but I think if we had some additional thrust on either side pushing very hard, perfectly straight up, it's actually going to steer it straight. And it definitely would help having even-sized people, but we kind of get what we get. We're able to make things that hit the floor really good. Well, we can use the lessons we learned from the tank earlier to actually pull the things along. And we can use this handy grid to keep everything going in a straight line. Instead of using cables, I've actually used springs between this platform and the rockets. I'd explain to you why, but I don't entirely understand myself. <laughs> now that I look at this, this isn't going to go well. Well, we did manage to springboard them upwards. I think we're headed back for the ground again. I just can't get this one right. Uh, luckily we have lots of these things. I think it just created like the worst theme park ride in existence. Imagine being this guy right now, watching rockets blaze just over your head, getting ever closer. I didn't even mean to set this up, I just wanted to see how the rockets behaved without any uh, anything in pushing them around. Turns out, they drop. That guy went a long ways. So when I launch the rockets, they do drop a little bit, they go almost horizontal but not quite. Now, so far we played with little people and regular sized people. But no one ever thinks about the big people. So to a child, a rocket does that. Oh damn it, I toppled my idiot. Anyways, to a regular sized person, a rocket does that. The full scorpion. So now we just gotta figure out where we wanna aim a rocket and then let the rocket go. Wow, those rockets are stronger than I thought. We split the large man right in half and lit him on fire. So that's what happens when you fire a regular sized rocket at a giant man. So what do you think would happen if we fired a giant rocket at a regular sized man? I'm actually particularly excited for this one. And the rocket didn't have the power to propel itself. Can I just sort of... There we go. This is what a regular sized gun looks like firing at this man. He's actually taking it pretty well. He's trying to get right back up to his feet. And you know what? That's actually pretty good because he can now have an objective opinion about being shot by different guns. Well, technically it's the same gun. It's just a little bit bigger. So let's see the difference. Uh, it might have had a little bit more recoil. It's probably considerably heavier. It looks like it did the same damage, but the only way to know for sure is to ask this guy. Sir, did you notice a difference between the two guns? Now I couldn't help but notice a single bullet passes through a single person. So how many people does it take to stop a bullet? We're gonna have to get a little bit creative here because the gun is a little bit above head height because it's a little big. But if we put people on a table, that should actually work out very nicely. I think that's a sufficient amount of people and they all stand upright. We're gonna do this in slow motion just so we can see clearly what's happening. Okay, it went into this guy's thigh at the end. So a bullet goes through three and a half people. At least from this gun. Well, I've quickly reset the row of people. We need to find a bullet that goes through all of them. And just to make sure they don't get brave and try and run away, I put some torches behind them so they'll light on fire should they try and escape. Next, we're going to use an assault rifle because I think it's probably a little more powerful. Take your guess now as to how many people we're about to penetrate. Ready, set, go. Uh, actually about the same amount of people. Uh, they did get shot in the heart rather than the thigh though. But you know what? We can go ahead and see that in slow motion as well. We'll watch the bullet fly out. Yeah, it penetrates three people. I think because it went through their arms, it didn't get three and a half. You know, we're going to go ahead and cauterize that for you. You'll be good as new in no time. People are more fireproof than I thought. Oh, nope. There he goes. All right. Well, on to the next gun. This gun fires high speed bolts. So I'm hoping they have a little more penetrating power. It's a little bit hard to get it to balance when it's as big, but I think we about got it if Idiot Stick could hold himself still for a second. All right, can we use a high speed railgun to penetrate more than three and a half people? Let's find out right now. Kablamo! That hardly went anywhere. 
I think it took that guy's leg off. He left something behind. We'll just put that back. There you go. Luckily, I think I've got an idea how we can escalate. We have something called a generator. It generates incredible amounts of energy when activated. I know that if we plug this into different devices, it essentially supercharges them. So if we take a wire and connect it from our generator to our gun and then flip that on, I think we might get a supercharged gun. So let's unpause it and see if our bullet penetrates more than one or two people. Nope. Still the same amount of penetration. I cut the guy cleanly in half. So let's demonstrate the difference a generator can make. This is a launcher. Without any additional power, it launches someone about that far, which is honestly pretty high up. Now, once we add a little juice to that with our super generator, mm, I think we're about there now, go. And you see he just turns into a pile of goo. We're following him, we hit the roof. But obviously it absolutely supercharges that thing. If a regular person flies this far, what about a child? Oh, careful, that's hot. They're legitimately like, 25% the mass of this person, so I think they're actually going to go quite a bit further. Follow cam is activated, let's see how far they go. They got some big air time, they definitely went higher. So physics do apply here. Oh, they went higher, not further. Now I basically wanted to see if a different amounts of weight on the launcher make the launcher perform differently. So we're going to launch them. Nope, that seems to still launch at full force, but you see the spread of how far people fly. So that gives me an idea. Well, first of all, we're going to add a little juice to this. Not too much because we don't want to gooify them instantly, just enough to give them an extra strong launch. So now we need to determine if a supersized launcher is going to launch people even harder. A single man? This time we'll put on a follow cam so we can see exactly how far he goes. Okay, <laughs> that just shreds him into a million pieces. So maybe size does matter after all. And for a little extra scientific curiosity, I'm going to attach that guy to this guy's thigh just to see exactly what happens. As I launch these, they're probably going to gooify, but the weight might slow them down just enough. Whatever the case, let's find it. Wow, the game did not love that. It actually did restrict the force quite a lot. I mean, some of these guys went a long, long ways, but they didn't smash into the back wall like I thought they would. They got maybe 60% of the way across the map. The guys that were tethered together actually, well, they ended up under the ramp somehow, so that's not a fun place to be. Well, you know we just have to give it a little supercharge. We're about to hit that fourth red light, and you know what? Any time now, go. Oh, that was satisfying. And they really do slow it down a lot, even supercharged. It just makes a rain of people all the way down the world. I have another weight resizing experiment. Uh, I've gone ahead and tacked this guy to the wall at some height up there. Because there are some simple things like a one ton weight. We are going to attach said weight to his leg via a spring. Then we're going to let him go and see if that's enough to hold him up. Uh, yeah, so far one ton is not enough to rip him apart, though it's probably not overly comfortable. And that way can actually really, uh, go down there a long ways. That's maximum, so yeah, he's perfectly fine. Whoa, he's not loving it. And I like how it slowly bounces up and down. He gets a moment to reprieve, but he knows what's coming now. But for good measure, we're gonna add a second weight to his legs to see if two tons is enough to rip a man in half. Oh, he just broke, and then he smashed into the weight, so two tons was enough to, um, you know, rip him apart. His arm, however, stayed intact quite nicely. It's actually really funny to try and just move this around because every time it touches anything, it sends it absolutely flying. But we're going to try and get it to hold still and we're going to see if this man can hold up the weight of it, which uh, I assume probably not. Nope. Do you think 12 people can hold up the weight? It's funny because the tallest ones are going to get the brunt of the weight first, so they're going to have to share a little bit. We're going to do this in slow motion so we can really see how this transpires and we'll see if they're able to hold up this weight. Wow, not even close. What are they made out of? So what if we sort of combine those last two ideas? We can launch the one ton thing actually really far. Uh, ooh, this is gonna be good. Okay, so it's landing right about there. We'll uh, put a few people there to make a note. They're gonna be facing the wrong direction, so they won't have to see it coming. Well, I'll find out how good my aim is. Up it goes. Now we patiently wait for its arrival. Any moment now. Oh, we missed. Well, I'm not really sure about the trajectory here, but they might be about to be crushed by a flying one-ton uh, monster cannonball. Well, it definitely killed the guys at the back. The ones at the front got nicely cushioned. Mm, that guy might need a chiropractor after that. Okay, we're going to add a little juice. This is also going to electrify our 50-ton menace. If it's full power, we can launch it. Now, I know what you're thinking. That hardly launched at all. That's not going to land on any people. It's going to land right here. This is people playground, though. The people are wherever you put them. So we're just going to sprinkle some in there, and I think we're pretty sure to have a hit here. This is how I have 100% accuracy with everything I do. Okay. Oh. Oh, what? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know why I can't get the most simple of experiments right anymore. Now, this is a seemingly harmless flashlight. 
When turned on, it simply provides a little bit of light, probably not much else. What I'm hoping is that it might generate a little bit of heat. This man is currently 32 degrees Celsius because we have this balanced on his head. So if we add a few more flashlights pointed directly at him, are we going to warm him up? So far, that doesn't really seem to be the case. I added a lot of flashlights, he is just as cold as ever. But that's where my beloved generator comes in. We're going to attach a gen generator to the flashlight pointed directly at his face, and that's hopefully going to supercharge. Yup, it certainly supercharges that flashlight. It's not getting any warmer for him though. The flashlight seems to emit no heat at all. Think about this as an upgraded flashlight. It's going to shine a teeny tiny laser into his face. He's at 33 degrees currently. So if I add a few more of these lasers, still nothing that exciting. So that's where we're going to escalate. This is a smaller generator, but okay, it melted him up to a thousand degrees in an instant. I didn't realize those all conducted to each other. But that's kind of interesting in itself. Look how powerful that is. Uh, we can get a temperature reading if we put this up into the lasers, I think. Yeah, that goes way up into the thousands of degrees in an instant. But now I sort of have to know, it gives enough for one bar of power on the other generator, but we can get four times that power if we start this generator up. So there we go, we're at one bar of power, there's two bars of power, it's getting brighter, the beams are getting bigger. Uh, there's three bars of power, the, uh, I think it's actually changing color. Yeah, that's getting more and more powerful and everything's about to explode. Okay, this is really good, I have a very good idea now. I just feel like our dear friend really deserves more lasers. And I'm actually hitting him with like a 90% accuracy, which is really impressive. I've now applied the appropriate generator, so we should be able to crank these lasers up to high power. Both the generators have been activated, now we unpause and watch this man, wow, get absolutely disintegrated. That was impressive. Well, my life is complete, I can just sit here and endlessly drop people into the lasers.